Hi there, I'm Nabil Murad. In this training video, I want to show you one of the most popular functions in Excel. It's called the VLOOKUP function. It became so popular that many job descriptions include it as a desirable skill. So what is a VLOOKUP function? A VLOOKUP function is simply an extraction function. So let's assume I'm in a store and I'm still using a primitive printed price list like this one. Just imagine that I have this list printed and the client comes in and asks me, what's the price of this product, product 3? And if I want to find the price of this product, I will have to go through my price list and search, is it product 3? No. I go to the next one. Is it product 3? No. When I bump into product 3, then I will have to move for a certain number of columns. In our situation, the price is in the second column, so I move to column number 2, grab that price, and deliver it back to the client. What I did manually right now is typically what a VLOOKUP function is doing. Why do we call it VLOOKUP function? Because it's searching vertically in the left column of this price list. This left column is called the lookup column. This value that I'm looking for is called the lookup value. This column is called the lookup column. I'm searching for the lookup value in the lookup column. The lookup column must be to the left side of this list. And this list is called the table array. So I'm looking for a lookup value, which simply means, what are you looking for? And the second argument of the VLOOKUP function, where do you look for it? I look for it in this table. We call it the table array. When I find it, I have to select a return value from which column? In our situation, if I want the price, that's column number two. If I want the color, that's column number three. And because I want the price, then the third argument will be two. We call it the column index number. Let's create our VLOOKUP function. Equal VLOOKUP. And there I hit tab. Look at the screen tip. What does it say? It says, we need a lookup value, which means, what are you looking for? I'm looking for this value one cell to my left. And then I hit comma. Where do you look for it? I look for it in this entire table or in this entire price list. In Excel, we call it the table array. So I'm looking for this entire table array. I'm going to select it. I'm selecting the top row. Then in order to extend my selection without having to drag, then I press shift Control down arrow. It selects the entire list. If I want to jump back to the top, I hit F4. And then I hit comma. The next argument, as you can read, column index number, it means from which column you need a return value. I need a return value from the second column, so I type 2. And then finally, the last question, are you looking at an exact match or an approximate match? I hit comma. I'm looking at an exact match. Exact means false, so I'll be selecting false. And then I hit tab. Look at the arguments of this function. I'm looking for whatever comes from A3. I look for it in this range. I need a return value from the second column. I'm expecting an exact match. Whenever you are searching by text, it's always an exact match. Let's say I want to extract a client record. I'm working at Service Ontario. I want to extract a client record by searching by the driver's license number or the social insurance number. Nothing approximate. It's an exact match. So you might have a question in mind. When do I use the approximate match then? In the next example, I'm going to show you a situation where we need to use an approximate match. When I hit enter, it says the price of product 3 is 17. And because I have a drop list, then I click on the down arrow and select a different product, let it be product 5. And now it says the price of product 5 is 24, and so on. And now let me think of a situation what if I don't want to extract the price? Instead, I want to extract the color. If I want to extract the color, there is one single argument to change. 
it's column number three, not column number two. So I'm going to put my function in the edit mode one more time by hitting the F2 key. And the only argument I would like to change is this argument. So I need to select the two and replace it by three. So I'll be selecting this little two, hit three, and when I hit enter, look at that, product five is green. If I change the product, and let's say I want to select product four, product four is also green. Let's go to product two, product two is blue, and everything is working just fine. By the way, I created a drop list for the label, so if you want to make it more descriptive, you can change the label to match the VLOOKUP function. Let's see another example of a VLOOKUP function where we need to use an approximate match. Let's say I would like to calculate how much tax I should be paying based upon my income. How much tax I should be paying based upon my income. I have an income tax table and in this income tax table if my income is anywhere between 0 and 1,000, then I pay nothing for the, for the tax. Between 1 and 2, I pay $25. Between 2 and 5, I pay 60. 5 and 10, I pay 120. Above 10, I pay 175. Now let's assume my income is $3,947. And let's do it manually first. If I want to calculate how much tax I should be paying, I have to keep this amount in memory. And then I go to the income tax table and compare. Is it greater than zero? Yes. Is it greater than 1,000? Yes. Is it greater than two? Yes. Is it greater than five? No. When I bump into a higher value, what do I do? I move to the previous bracket, the 2,000 and then to extract the commission rate or the tax rate, then I move horizontally to the second column, grab the $60, and deliver it back to the cell. What I did manually right now is typically what a VLOOKUP function with an approximate match doing. And why do I say approximate? Because unlike the previous example where I was searching for a product, whatever the product you look for, then you will find it in the leftmost column. But in this situation, I'm looking for this number. Do you see it anywhere here in the left column? No, I don't have the same exact number. The number is somewhere between two brackets. And because it's somewhere between two brackets, then we consider it an approximate match. So let's create our VLOOKUP function with an approximate match. Equal VLOOKUP. What's your lookup value? Well, my lookup value is my income coming from cell K3 and there I hit comma where do you look for it where is your table array my table array is this entire table and there I hit comma what's your column index number which simply means from which column you need a return value we only have two columns so I type two I need from the second column the return value and then the last argument is responsible of 90% of errors coming from this function. That's why I want to intentionally type something wrong. I want to intentionally show you what will happen if I select exact match. It must return an error because we don't have an exact match. So I'll be typing comma and I'll select false which means which means exact so when i hit the tab key i know up front it will tell me we don't have that number when i close the bracket it tells me we don't have that number it's not available that's because of the last argument let me go and put my function in the edit mode f2 and i want just to change this last argument so I'm going to hit the backspace, and this time I'll select true, close the bracket, and when I hit enter, it's extracting the $60. I want to test my function. How can I test it? What if I type a number that is extremely close to the next bracket? 
So I'll be typing for 4,999.99, which means one cent, one cent before the, the next bracket. Do you think the VLOOKUP function will be forgiving? No way. So when I hit enter, it always moves to the previous bracket. What if I add one cent? So I'll be selecting the same number and type 5,000. When I hit enter, now it's extracting the 120. If you enjoyed this training video, like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you in our next training video.